The Holland Heineken House can be quiet, but it's got the four basic ingredients for an Olympic party. A giant screen TV, a DJ, beer, and bacon. We put makeup on our face and they go, we go out of our minds. I gotta have a Heine in the, in the Heine house. So. This is the Heine House? Well, the Heine House. It's the Heine oh, Heineken House. It's a quiet night tonight at the Holland Heineken House, but it still goes home with a bronze medal. On to the Swiss Army gala band at the House of Switzerland. Can you say Stevie Wonder? Can you say cheese? Mm. We're drinking wine. Be happy and the band never stop to play. But do the Swiss know how to party? Yes, they know how to party. So for the music, the food, and the cheese, the Swiss take home the silver. But it's the German Thuringen House that pulls in the crowds in Salt Lake. A line snakes to the door every night. Inside, it's a German beer hall with beer and brats. Hot! No. <laughs> Pretty good? Very good. And the best cover band in Salt Lake. When was the last time you heard Rawhide with a German accent? This is the greatest place in Salt Lake City. Yeah, it's a good time. On Wisconsin! So for the beer and the brats in this crazy band, and for lighting the fire within, the gold medal goes to the German house. Jawohl! Capture the moment. The exhibition of 128 Pulitzer Prize winning photographs will take you back. And it's not always fun. We're reminded that we measure out our lives more often than not in tragic moments. But curator Seema Rubin, who started this project 10 years ago, doesn't want the visitor to despair. Not everything here is sad. There's some delicious moments of joy and reunion. But uh, life is what it is. People react strongly to the show, so much so that they have Kleenex stations placed throughout the exhibition. Spend an hour here and you'll need a tissue. There are photographs here of joy and triumph and tragedy, and there are photographs that will simply break your heart. Like this photo of a woman hugging her husband's tombstone, taken by Denver Post photographer Anthony Sow. You can hardly look at it. And she's holding on for America. And um, this is what the Pulitzer was about. Some of these pictures you'll remember, some you've never seen, but you'll never forget them after a visit here. Bill Houston, Fox 31 News. You can't miss it at the tattered cover. J.R. Moringer's memoir, The Tender Bar, is going to be big. Moringer and I are friends from his days as a reporter for the Rocky Mountain News. Then he went on to the LA Times and won a Pulitzer. This week, his book drops and the buzz is tremendous. I think it's going to be big. I think it's going to be big. Um, and. Uh, I think it, it's, it deserves that. Vanity Fair features it as a hot type. Newsweek just wrote a rave review. The New York Times and Entertainment Weekly have upcoming articles. It's about growing up without a father and turning to this bar in my hometown for surrogate fathers and role models and male influences. But it's about more than that. It's about love. It's about this love of sports that men have. It's about that fierce love between uh, a single mother and an only child. And it's about that... that fanatic love little boys have for older men who you know pay attention to them and help raise them and teach them about baseball or cards or women it's sad and sometimes it's funny some people say that uh... the sex scenes are funny <laughs> <laughs> so you will laugh and cry you've heard that before but you're gonna hear a lot more about the tender bar john denver sang like an angel and colorado misses its far out troubadour the show, Almost Heaven, makes us miss him even more, but not for the right reasons. The songs are pretty enough. After all, they're from John Denver. But it's not John Denver singing, and this troupe of actors just doesn't have the pipes. Still, there's no denying the thrill of hearing these odes to Colorado. Colorado. 
and how many of you even moved to Colorado because of this high country anthem? Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. But the highs are hurt by the show's lows. Almost Heaven is an aggressively unattractive production, especially by Denver Center standards. Take the sloppy costumes, please. It's as if everyone went to school on Dress Ugly Day. You fill up my senses. Annie's song is a beautiful love song turned thin and reedy. Sunshine on my shoulders. And the tender sunshine on my shoulders is elevated to a belted ballad. Too often, this salute to John Denver feels like a dinner theater warm-up act, something between the Barnstormers and a Hootenanny. Almost Heaven is almost awful, except it brings memories of the country boy back to us for two hours, and those songs that we never play anymore sing in our heads for days. He's the pinball wizard, Tommy, the Who's rock opera once again revved up and on tour. One thing you can't deny is the music. Pete Townsend's rock and roll still hits the notes, especially if you're old enough to remember this as an LP, not a CD. So I bet a lot of gray-haired old goats in the audience last night remembered sitting around the dorm listening to I'm Free. And then, of course, there's the Acid Queen. But she's almost a caricature, an acid queen. Uh, sometimes Tommy seems more dated than Aida. For the most part, the voices in Tommy are strong, energetic, and on key. It's the production that has problems. It isn't a simple concert version, but it's not a full-blown Broadway treatment either. It meets the material halfway. The set is all steel beams and lights and sheets of color. This isn't like smoke and mirrors. It is smoke and mirrors. It gives Tommy a bright but cheesy feel, a production on the run. Tommy isn't all bad and the seats aren't expensive, but you might fare better just buying the album, putting on your headphones, and hearing it again lying on your living room floor. Sure, your kids will think you're nuts. Tell them you can't hear them. You can't see them. You don't need the play. This is an amazing journey you can take all alone. Home Over the Movie follows the nationwide quest of Chris Marino and Tim Sinolio to find the ultimate comb over, the most outrageous statement of the hair challenge. It took them two years, but they did find some people willing to talk about their outrageous hairdos. Here I am with a full back flipped to the front, early days. That was tough to do. I really look ridiculous. <laughs> but most men were in denial. They'd say, what comb over? I actually got smacked in Fort Lauderdale, yeah. Florida, and I had a guy really seriously threaten to kill me um, here in Denver uh, at the Cherry Creek Arts Festival. The most famous comb over belongs to Donald Trump, so the boys traveled to New York City to meet the man and his mane, but they only caught him from a distance. They came home and had local hair specialist, Mr. Harold, analyze the Donald's do. See how low his hair is parted? No one parts their hair that low. But his is mostly comb from the back. Now Chris and Tim are the world's experts on comb-overs. Not to split hairs, but are they funny or sad? I think there's something comedic about them. I mean, they're either comedic or tragic, right? Yeah, I'm, I, in the beginning I thought it was tragic. Now I think it's sort of, I, I kind of like them. And if you like them, well, you're going to love this movie. Bill Houston, Fox 31 News. Westward's Best of Denver issue has hit the stands, a 288-page love letter to the city. Westward editor Patty Calhoun says it's the weekly's chance to play nice. Well, 51 ye weeks a year, I think some people would think we're a little nasty. And one week a year, we are nothing but nice. This is our orgy of niceness, our present to the city. Some people care that Dazzle is the best jazz club. Bender's is best new nightclub. Luca de Italia is Denver's best Italian restaurant. And Frank Bonanno, the chef at Luca and Mizuna, is Denver's best cooker. So I'm very honored. I, I am. I feel great. Uh, Racine's is Denver's best power breakfast. But what we really care about is who's got the the best hair on television. I'm Jeremy Hubbard. It's 5:30. And Fox 31 is the big winner. Jeremy Hubbard has the best hair on a male media personality. I'm not sure why I want it. I think a lot of people would argue that I have the worst hair on TV. And Dylan the helicopter dog wins in a new category: best hair on a media canine. We're honored. Who would have ever thought 
that we'd have best hair. So give that dog a bone. He makes the station proud. Bill Houston, Fox 31 News.